another video from Rivera Motorsports. Uh, make sure you like, comment in the section. How are you guys doing today? What are you guys' builds? We want to know. Make sure to subscribe as well. So today, we're gonna be working on the 4Runner again. Uh, since the last time you guys saw it, I did install the radiator. I installed the radiator hoses. I installed the pi uh, all the pulleys and everything. A good tip for you guys with these radiator hoses, they're brand new, fresh out the box. I threw a little bit of grease on them, slid them on. It makes it so much easier. You don't have to hustle. You don't have to struggle putting it on. This bottom hose is actually one of the most, the biggest pains, and I thought it was one of the hardest things to do. Reason being is this hose is so close to these lines that if you throw it on the wrong way, you'll know you threw it on the wrong way. Other than that, everything's run. Alternators run. We just ran that. All the vacuum hoses, I finally found a diagram. So there's about 12 vacuum hoses, and I plugged up basically all of them except for it looks like the brake booster we connected the crankcase uh, the PCB system so this basically allows air to come out of the motor so all your bad fumes come out makes the motor run a lot better makes it run cleaner it's better for the environment as well so you do want to run that if you're running a stock car if you're running a race car though you know we kind of get rid of that so let's go ahead and get the next to the to the next thing which is going to be just buttoning up bleeding the coolant system and getting it to run finally here we go. All right, back at it again with the wiring. Uh, get, this, get this blanket off of here. There's so much stuff we have to do. We have a lot of wiring to do. We have a lot of coolant to be bleeding just to get this car out. We're trying to get this car out in a matter of a week. Anyways, so with this wiring job, I'm gonna have to be dealing with the transmission side of things. The engine is all set up, ready to go, but the transmission does have a few plugs, which they used an older transmission on the swap. You're supposed to use the same year transmission. If you don't do this, you run into this issue where you don't have the right amount of sensors. So I have about eight plugs down there, but there's only four sensors. So this is an issue. I'm gonna have to find out how to basically loop them, make them think that they're okay, make the computer think everything's okay, and make the 4x4 engage. So that's the big deal with this car. It's gonna be a 4x4 4Runner 5VZ swap. It's not, it's not a very common swap, so we're running into a lot of issues of research-wise. But other than that, it's just going to be doing the transmission, finishing that up, engine's all ready to go. And then we can get this blanket back on me, and I'm going to go back to sleep, so see you! Hey guys, I'm Adilso, I'm a Julian Apprentice, and now we're going to move a little bit at the cliffs. Uh, and we're going to see if he's up or not thermostat. Wait, where's Julian? I know. What the? Alright guys, so I'm back for my little dance uh, break. Sorry about that. You know, you guys weren't supposed to see that. So we're going to be installing this thermostat. So dude, so what is it, what is the thermostat made to do? It's regulate the temperature in your car. So when you, you're, basically when your coolant's regulated, it will run a lot better. You want to run it through the radiator and make sure it stays cool. If it's always running the same and it just keeps going all the time, it's not going to have time to sit in the radiator and be cool. So you always want to have a thermostat in your car. Shut! Anyways, you want to put, you want to make sure it's, sorry for that interruption again, you know, we've so many interruptions around here, dude. Anyways, so we're just going to be basically taking this out. There's two bolts right here. We're going to just slap it in. Uh, we're going to clean it up, make sure it looks all clean. And of course, I'm going to show you all this. It's going to be cool. It's of course going to be cool. So that's the whole point of it, to get the fans going and make sure everything's running right. And we'll see if you have a thermostat or no. out the old thermostat looks like it's gonna be a colder step thermostat so this opens at a lot colder of a temperature than this one so this one's gonna be more of a hotter so it'll open up at about this looks like a 180 this one's gonna be about a 160 you're gonna want to run a 180 usually if you're gonna run a stock setup reason being is your fans won't kick on at a, until it's at a certain degree which is its operating temperature which is 180 degrees for this car so basically the way a thermostat works is the springs compress under a, a certain amount of heat and whatever temperature they're set to this will open up the valve and it will let coolant go right through it a tip for you guys when you're doing bolts make sure you hand tighten it first reason being is if you just go straight at it with an impact or anything close to that you will strip the threads. So just get a get a little hand tight. Once you do the hand tight, get it with a little ratcheting wrench or a ratchet. Eventually then it'll tighten, just do an even amount of torque. 
and just keep going. Just finished up bleeding the system. We just let it sit open with the cap for about 10 to 15 minutes. That gets all the air out of the system, which you don't want any air in your system, otherwise it's gonna overheat. Only problem is the fan will not kick on. Basically, this is the one that cools down everything first, then this one kicks on. So instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna wire it up to where this fan turns on simultaneously with this fan. So it's gonna be dual cooling. Just ran out the output readings and stuff so this is the the blue wire is going to be the low setting and this green wire is going to be the high setting we're basically going to tap into the the blue wire because we want these both to turn on at the same time and in case of it overheating or wanting to this one can still go into high mode therefore kicking it into high gear and cooling it down even faster if you don't have a high and low mode it'll always stay at the same temperature and you risk either overheating it or like i said keeping it below operating temperature Good, so the fans are working now. They both turn on at the same time uh, as it gets a lot hotter. Uh, they're not on right now because it's not at operating temperature yet. So the cool thing is it'll bring it back down, up and down, up and down. But this one, like I said, has a high mode. In case it does get that hot, it will cool it down right there and there. So this is good to go. This is Leo here at Rivera Motorsports. Uh, here we got this loop clutch. This is going on to a 2006 BMW 328i. Here we got the uh, clutch disc, which is an OE replacement. Take a look at that, yes, very nice. This is a good clutch, good bang for your buck. You can find these online, which the customer did, brought it to us, 150 to 200 bucks. Call it a day. Here's the pressure plate. Nothing too fancy, you know. Like I said, it's a clutch replacement for a stock clutch. So it comes with all the basic necessities. Here's the alignment tool, because with your clutch fork, throw out bearing, and your pilot bearings, everything necessary to do the clutch real simple. Here at Rivera Motorsports, not only do we offer OE clutches, we also offer a, cl a competition clutch. Uh, ACT clutch. Uh, we also can get you for you high horsepower guys twin discs uh, and many many different other brands. Uh, also we include uh, Snap Finance and West Creek for you guys out there uh, that don't know what Snap Finance is. It's a company that offers you a hundred day same as cash loan. So if you have a bank account over open for over 90 days make a thousand dollars a month you'll get approved right away. Hit us up on the DMs for sure. Hey, hey, where are you going? Hey, dude, it's coming out of your check, bro. All right guys, so as Leo was explaining, we are doing a clutch job on this BMW. Basically, you wanna make sure you're really clean and thorough with this. We checked the flywheel, made sure there was no warping, there was no cracks. We just uh, got a little grinding stone, you know, grinded it down, made sure it was nice and smooth, made sure it was flat. So when you do apply the flywheel, it mates up really nicely. Make sure uh, when you do the pressure plate, make sure you brake clean it because from factory they come with some grease to keep it from rusting and stuff like that. Basically just keeping all this clean, that's the main, the main thing you want to do. On another note, so we're going to be torquing down these bolts to 25 foot-pounds. That's what the book requests. It can range anywhere from 20 to 25 foot-pounds. You do not want to go too much on these, otherwise the, the clutch will grab uh, unevenly. Uh, we're going to be using the Snap-on torque wrench, digital and everything. So it, we just got this brand new, it was recalibrated. We know this is spot on and we're going to be using only the best of the best here. So let's go ahead and get to it. I've been coming here for 
for God, since it opened probably almost on. Yeah, four years. A long time. And every time I come, I always got to buy something because there's always something good here. Yeah. <laughs> but I owe, a lot, I owe a lot of respect to, to this guy right here, Theo, because I mean, he really he helped me get my car the way it is. Even my last car and the car before that, I brought pretty much every car I've had here. And even now, if I don't live out here, but I still make the drives because it's worth it. So if you guys haven't been here, definitely come check them out. So there you guys have it.